everybody, it's Desiree and Morgan, and we're coming to you from the Aerial Foundation Teen Makerspace. And today we're going to show you how to do some succulent terrariums. And before we get to that, I have a few things to say. So these next two projects, so this one and next week's that came in this bag are some of my favorite things. They are some plants. And about five years ago, I was four and a half months pregnant I was growing something myself and I decided to take a chance and apply for a job as a teen makerspace assistant here. And over the past five years, my child has grown and now it's time for her to start kindergarten in the fall. And some of you have already aged out of our program, but I have never had a job that I've loved as much as this one, but now it's time for me to find another position in the library. So. I'll just be downstairs and I'll be working on the last finishing touches of getting books processed out to get to you guys. But I'll still be here and I'll come back occasionally, but this last project and the next one are my kind of parting gifts to you guys. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you get to watch your succulents grow for a long time. So let's go. <laughs> Don't cry. Don't get emotional. <laughs> It'll be okay. You need to It'll put, be okay. Like a thing that says emotional. Emotional. <laughs> the YouTube. Okay, let's begin. So inside of your bag, you're gonna have a lot of things. So you'll have a baggie of some colorful sea glass, and everybody gets a random color. You have a container of activated charcoal. It's about one teaspoon. A pipette. A plastic spoon, a bag of Spanish moss, some white top dressing stones, some stones for drainage, your container, and your soil. Carefully fold your bag back up and set it to the side because you're going to use this for next week's project. And of course, don't forget, you'll have your stuff in it. Which, these guys have been sitting at my house for the past month. They've been fed, they've been watered regularly, they've been taken care of. They should be good to go. But we'll get to that in a second. So, you're going to take your container and you're going to unwrap it. And you're going to spread your tissue paper out on your table or wherever you're planning on doing this. Because this can be your dirt catcher to save you from making a huge mess anywhere that you're making. Sorry about the noise, that's a little ASMR for you. Yeah. So if you want to take the sticker off of your container, you can. I'm not going to do that right this second, but I can later. You're also going to need some water so that you can water your plant. So we just have a little cup of water sitting here. And you might want to grab a paintbrush from the other paintbrushes that we've given you this season. And what you're going to do first is take your paintbrush and fluff out some of the dirt that is in the little crevices of your plant because sometimes dirt gets in there and that can cause like an infection basically so here you go thank you while morgan's doing that we'll go to the next step so first thing that you're going to put into your container is the activated charcoal and you're just going to open it up and pour it right down in the bottom and you want to kind of shake it around. You're going to turn your fingers black. If you're sensitive to things, you might want to grab some gloves for this because your, the soil and the activated charcoal can maybe make you have a rash if you're sensitive to things. I'm used to getting my hands in the dirt, so it's no big deal to me. Okay. Just kind of smack it around so it's even in there. It just has to be on the bottom. It helps to clean the water. It's like a filtration system. So then the next thing that you're going to put in is your bag of big rocks. And same thing goes for them. You just want them to be spread around the bottom 
You can take them in your hand and spread them like this, just gently. Because it's still glass and you don't yeah, want to break, break, the break the glass. And putting the rocks in the bottom of your planter helps to make the water not just sit in the soil and rot your roots of your plant. So we use the whole bag of rocks and then just take your hand and smush them down a little bit and make sure they're even. You can hold up your container, place them however you want. And you can save your little bags and your containers and you can use them for whatever you want. You don't need to throw them away. You can use them for something else. So then the next thing is the Spanish moss. And this is basically like a biodegradable coffee filter that's gonna keep the dirt from falling down into the rocks. So what you're gonna do is open that up and you're gonna pull it all out. And it's messy, it's messy. And you're gonna take it and pull it apart a little bit to where you can barely see through it. So you don't wanna be able to see through it and you just wanna push it down in and smash it as much as you can and just make sure you have an entire layer of that all around the bottom. Well, not the bottom, but the middle. You get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. You might not use all of this, that's okay. Or you can use all of it, it's up to you. You just wanna make sure you have a layer that is gonna keep your soil from falling down in. And push it down pretty well. There's another bag that you can reuse for something. The next step is the soil. Now we gave you a bunch of soil. It might be too much. We didn't get to measure it beforehand, but it's okay. If you have extra soil, you can just throw it outside in your garden bed, or you can go to Walmart and get you another little plant if you want to. So you can take your spoon or you can just pour it in if you want. This soil is specifically for succulents and moisture control. Um, at home, when I do my succulents, I purchase something called Coco Core. It comes in a brick, and it's basically like the husks of coconut, and it helps to wick some of the moisture out. Um, but this soil already has it. That's what these stringy bits are. And it also helps the soil, the succulents roots to grab on and have something to hold on to. So you just wanna fill this up all the way to the top and then push it down. You don't wanna super firmly pack the soil, but you want it to at least be firm enough that when you put your plant in, it's gonna stand up on its own. And save a little bit for putting on top in a minute here when you're done. Don't rush, take your time. Take, and take your time doing this because this is, this is something that you should enjoy. You are nurturing a little plant to give you more oxygen and they take your carbon dioxide and turn it into oxygen for you. It's, I just love, I didn't know how much I loved succulents or plants until the summer that I was off and it was just like a new thing that I found and I love. How's okay, look? looks good. Awesome. So about an inch, maybe like the, the tip of your fingertip, you want to leave about that much. So then you're going to take your plant out of the little pot and with everything else like we have here, you're gonna save this pot for next week's project. You need it for next week's project. So set it aside, you can peel off that sticker. And everybody has a different, well, a lot of people have different kinds of um, succulents. We, I think we got what, seven different types? 
Uh, yeah, seven or eight. But I'll identify them in your container, like in your bags. I'll send a little note with whatever it is, or I'll put a sticker on the outside. But this one is a kind of Echeveria, and so is that one. I believe that one's called Pearl von Nuremberg, and I think this one's called Miranda. I'm not sure, I can't remember. But, so what you're gonna do is inspect your plant a little bit. So turn it over, look down at the root system, and while you're doing that, you're gonna take your fingers really gently and squish the roots a little bit. So you can knock off this store-provided dirt. This is just what I do every single time I bring a plant home. I'm gonna knock off this old dirt. Just really gently loosen up the root ball. And this way you can check out the root system as well and make sure it's not damaged. You can look and see if there's any bugs in it. Sometimes there's bugs inside, sometimes there's not. Yeah, you, you're gently, you don't have to be afraid to like damage it because it's it's a plant. It's not, it's not a baby. I mean, this is an actual established little baby plant. Now you wanna look at your bottom layer of leaves and if any of them look kind of sickly, you're gonna gently pull it back and forth like this, just very gently. And you're gonna set that to the side because when you're done, you can set those on top of your soil and wait and see and you might have a baby plant in a couple weeks. So, but you just wanna make sure that you don't leave any part of the leaf behind. If it's whole, you know, it's fine. But set that to the side because it needs to develop a callus on it before you plant it anywhere. So just set it to the side. Okay, so now you have a clean plant. Good, yep. And it's ready to go into the pot. So then you're going to pull your pot over back to you. Center here. And you're gonna just take your finger and dig a hole into it until you touch the moss down on the bottom. You don't wanna go past the moss and you're just gonna place it in there. And you can use your spoon and kind of push the dirt in around the roots. Just kind of spoon. Oh, there. Well, I'm gonna use my hands. Okay, you can use your hands. I, I like to use both. Now, if you feel like you need some more dirt, you can. this is where you can add more dirt. If you don't, then don't add any more dirt. You just want it to be firm, so that way your plant is standing up. You don't want it to fall. And you don't really, it's not gonna stand up above the dirt because it has loose roots. But until the roots get a little bit more established, you want something to keep it from sitting on top of the soil. So that's what the next step is for. That's what these white stones are for. So after you get your dirt all patted in, in. Like I said, firm but not firm, not too firm that you can't like stick your pipette in. You want to be able to stick your pipette in so that way the roots can push out through. So then you're going to take your white top dressing rocks and your spoon and very carefully you're going to add a layer of these to the top. So while you're doing this, you want to pull up your plant and put these down right at the top of the soil. So that way your plant is not touching the soil because you don't want it to get soggy from the wet soil. So go all the way around your plant and do this. Now I find if you sit here and think about what this plant is going to do for you and what you're going to do for this plant it helps you to establish a connection with the plant that you're planting giving it your love Let me just 
use your spoon to spread that out. It, it doesn't have to be exactly just one layer. It can be a little thicker in spots. It doesn't matter. But then you're going to use the rest of the stones and go all the way to the outside of the container. Sometimes the pesky little stones like to go in between the leaves, but you can get those in a minute here. With, with your paintbrush or with tweezers or whatever. I'm gonna pause for just one second and check my And these white rocks are just, um, they're fish rocks. We found them in the fish section of Walmart. You can get like a five pound bag for what? I can't remember, like five bucks or something yeah, like that. Cheap. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can just be some plain white fish rocks. brush and pull out any of the rocks that you've got in there and go ahead and dust it off your leaves again. And then uh, the other bag that you received was some pretty ornamental rocks. So, or sea glass, so you can just put those in however you want. If your plant needs a little bit of uh, support on one side, so say it's like leaning to one side, you just wanna put that in there. I'm actually, my plant is pretty well spread out in here, but I'm gonna try to put them along the outside just for some decoration. One of you will get this big piece in one of your bags. Nice. Just throw it in there. If you have any of the white rocks left over, you can just push them over. And then you can take all of this other dirt that is left over and you can just put it back into your bag. You can just put it right back in your bag. Even with that, the Spanish moss pieces, it doesn't matter. The white rocks, they can all go back in. And you can save this dirt. Or like I said, you can throw it out in your yard or out anywhere or use it for another succulent. Those, you're just gonna set them to the side of your plant. You can just set them like right in here. You can set them on a paper plate in a windowsill. You could set them in a closet that's dark. You could do whatever you want with them. As soon as a callus develops over there, uh, then you're safe to set them on a bed of soil or like I said, you can, you can propagate a succulent basically anywhere. They will start to grow like a little baby plant and then roots, and then you can put them in the soil. So whatever you want to do with it, you do with it. So here's my little baby plant. And here's Morgan's little pretty. Oh, yours is so pretty too. So my it turned out color. so good. Yeah, these are really wonderful. So beautiful. So that's not it though, because the next part is you have to water them. Mm -hmm. So we gave you a pipette in your bag. Now succulents, they will tell you when they need water because their leaves will start to shrivel up a little bit when they're not getting enough water. And if they look transparent, that means you're getting, you're putting too much water in. So what you're going to want to do is just take your pipette and I'm going to fill, I'm going to put probably like three squirts or something. Maybe, maybe four, maybe five, it doesn't matter. You can go ahead and get the soil wet. 
And whenever you feel like the soil is dry, that is when you want to give them more water. And it's really important that you follow that because they're in a closed container. If they had a drainage hole at the bottom, then you wouldn't want to put rocks in the bottom and you would want to follow the same rule and water it when the soil is dry there too. And succulents love sun, so sit them in the south facing window in your house and when it gets above 60 degrees outside you could even set these outside if you wanted to just make sure that you pay attention to them not getting sunburned what would that look like well some people like them to be sunburned because that's when they start to show their different colors like yours would turn like pink in this like if it got too sunburnt but you also risk like stressing your plant too much to like maybe killing it okay. but you know yeah you just want to continue watering until you can see that all of your dirt is pretty much moist <laughs> And if it bugs you so much that see you have like some dirt coming up along the sides, you can wait till uh, everything's settled a little bit more and then brush that down if it bothers you that much. It doesn't really bother me that much because this is so pretty anyways. Okay guys, well I hope that you enjoy this and I hope that you can keep these alive. Uh, if not, you can always go to the store and buy a new plant because even if it dies, it, it still brought you some joy for a little bit. But we'll see you next week and we'll be showing you the next project that's in your bag next week. So have a good day. See you guys. <laughs>